Uh, I'm Sanjay. Uh, I work for Intel, and this Andreas uh, works for Consensus. So uh, today we're gonna we are going to share uh, some of the work that we have been doing uh, in the space of like you know how we can apply trusted compute uh, for the good of Ethereum uh, as an option. Uh, so the talk today is like you know two parts. One is uh, uh, generally talking about how we are viewing this uh, uh, trusted uh, compute to uh, play in the space. And then uh, Andreas will drive, uh, complete it with a concrete example of something that we're doing. And then uh, tomorrow, uh, there's a breakout session that will go into a whole bunch of uh, more uh, uh, applications in this space. So uh, with that, uh, I'll get started. Um, so, like, so to, uh, to get, there are like lots of definitions of when it comes to trusted compute. So, uh, so I thought that would start off with the, you know, having a level set of what it means, right? Uh, typically, when I uh, talk about trusted compute, I say that hey, it's a place on your PC or on uh, your uh, server where software can execute uh, without interfere uh, without inter any external interference. So to drive the point home, uh, so think of the box in the big box in the middle is your PC or your server. It has two parts to it, the trusted and untrusted uh, part. And the blue is the trusted part or the trusted compute. And inside there, you can run your code and or you can have your secrets like keys and uh, any sensitive data. Uh, all of that can be processed in this blue part uh, and it will be secure even though in the white part around it, uh, you may have a malware or something else is owning that system. So uh, it gives you that uh, isolation uh, on, a, on an off-the-shelf platforms. And uh, the other side of it is like, you know, uh, the final point there is that whatever it does, it gives you an attestation to uh, what happened uh, so that like anybody can verify the, that the result really did happen inside the trusted compute and, uh, uh, and these instructions did actually get executed. Uh, so, uh, I work for Intel, and Intel's uh, one of the uh, popular uh, trusted computes out there is uh, Intel SGX, and uh, uh, more than happy to talk about it uh, uh, in general. Uh, but today, we will talk in generally in terms of trusted compute. And then there are these other uh, uh, variants of trusted compute based on uh, uh, ZK proofs and the MPC. Uh, those are also there uh, that can be used uh, uh, to apply to the concepts that we're going to be uh, talking here. So, uh, so there's uh, so the first thing we were saying is like you know hey uh, how how do we how can uh, trusted compute play in this space and there are lots of questions and uh, uh, you guys probably seen this uh, uh, this picture uh, and uh, what we're asking is like you know hey how can uh, uh, you know if we add trusted compute to this world, right now the problem is like you can get uh, two of the three, not all three. So can we basically uh, do something with trusted compute so that we can uh, uh, you know, uh, make it possible to achieve all three, uh, so that we have scalability, we have decentralization, and we have the security. So let's talk about each of these things uh, briefly and, uh, uh, and then see how that goes. Uh, so first of all, like the security is uh, plainly is like transactions per second or seconds per transaction. Uh, we believe that you know, given the uh, uh, you know the way these trusted computes work in terms of you have the integrity of the execution and things like that, you can combine it with the constructs like you know uh, plasma chains and uh, side chains, and you can achieve uh, a, a lot of scalability in that space. And uh, there has been work in the space hap uh, done, and uh, uh, some of that will be talked about in the breakout tomorrow. Uh, the other side of the thing is that uh, the security is uh, there are two ways to look at the security. One is uh, security of your consensus and things like that, and one is the security of uh, around it, you know, uh, transaction uh, ordering and things like that. So again, going to the property that you uh, have, you can trust like, hey, if I asked this tr trusted compute to do one plus one, it did do one plus one. Uh, uh, so, uh, so based on that, we are doing some work. And that's uh, work that uh, Andreas will uh, 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 talk about uh, in a little bit. And finally, the decentralization, right? Uh, there's a lot of this conver conversation is like, if you rely on trusted compute, you uh, let go of decentralization. And this is something that we would like to have a conversation around, because uh, 
if you take trusted compute, uh, the way I view uh, decentralization, the way I have you know, read it in various uh, articles like on sharding and things like that, it's about you know, two properties, like censorship resistance and permissioning. And we look at uh, trusted compute, uh, it doesn't have either of these properties. Uh, anybody can, uh, uh, you can, uh, my PC has uh, this trusted compute, you, all of your PCs have, have it and you are free to run it. So there is no, that you need to have a special hardware from somewhere to do these kinds of things. Uh, and then uh, uh, you can, uh, and uh, initially yes, there were some controls in terms of like, you know, who all gets to run software in this space and things like that. And uh, what at least for Intel, we have worked to, uh, uh, you know, actually remove all of those uh, controls in terms of like, you know, we are no longer going to be in the middle uh, of like who gets to execute and who gets to attest and things like that. So we have, uh, 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 you know, uh, worked to be in last one year since last DevCon 3 to, uh, uh, you know, ease out all of that stuff. Uh, but, uh, but there is this thing, like, like anything in this space, uh, as we go further, uh, as we go new, uh, use it in newer spaces, there's always that, you know, hey, things can get hacked, which, is, which we view is no different than uh, a particular hashing algorithm getting hacked, uh, as long as we, there's a commitment to basically fix it. And then there is this notion that uh, whoever is the provider of this trusted compute has done the due diligence or, and is willing to do continued due diligence to make sure that it is, uh, you know, uh, delivering on its promises. So in general, we believe that you know it uh, trusted compute, if it uh, used in a particular uh, you know ways, uh, can be a very uh, you know uh, helpful tool in addressing uh, and easing this uh, trilemma uh, problem uh, that that we have in blockchains. Can just help it to uh, you know uh, get deployed very uh, easily in some cases. So. Uh, so what I will do is like quickly, you know, before I jump into like, you know, uh, some of the th uh, ideas we have and then a concrete idea just uh, to level set a, a common design pattern around us. So you have a trusted compute, it can be in a PC or in a, a server. You have some function that you can basically, uh, you know, uh, deploy to it. And that, uh, that typically we call an enclave. Uh, and that function can be anything. It could be uh, uh, matching a fingerprint data against a template or finding a a particular pattern in something. It can be anything. The uh, idea is that you can, uh, uh, you know, you can be sure that particular uh, sets of instructions were executed and that your data, that whatever you gave it, was uh, handled uh, confidentiality. And then uh, there can be any requester who can provide two things. One is the data on which they would like to operate, have that algorithm operate upon. And plus, you can also provide your own identity that the enclave or the function will check before even executing your uh, 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 your request. And uh, then uh, end result of this, all of this process is like you have data, you have algorithm all executing inside this container and a secure container and you come, uh, output is this attested result that anybody uh, can basically validate. Uh, it can be the requester or it can be somebody else who you are targeting that. And finally, if you are running this trusted compute in the context of a PC, you do have this uh, human uh, secured, what we call protected transaction display. And that's basically is that uh, before the transaction uh, is completed, you can prompt a user for some kind of a pin or something like that so that uh, you have, uh, user has all the uh, control at the end of the day what happened. So you can uh, 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 build that in. And uh, tomorrow, uh, during breakout, uh, Ledger, who have built a wallet on top of uh, S uh, SGX, will talk about some of this. So in general, what, what we believe is like if you step up from uh, all of this, uh, this thing enables this notion that I can prove that something I did or I did not. And I can be kind of sure that the data that I gave it to you, it didn't leak. So that's what this trusted compute is uh, giving at the end of the day. So now let's uh, uh, jump into one, uh, one last slide from me is how could it now connect with uh, Ethereum, specifically Ethereum 2.0. Uh, this picture probably, you know, uh, most of the people have seen it. It's uh, uh, of the Medium articles. And the main thing really here is that this whole, you know, today morning, like in the morning, Vitalik talked about this beacon chain and things like that. So this four tiers of, uh, you know, abstraction or the layering of this whole uh, uh, Ethereum 2.0. 
in this, there are two, two things here. One is this beacon chain, which I, in my view, is like it's the control plane that's uh, making sure that things are happening the right way. And then at the bottom is your execution plane. So in the control plane, this is where you have uh, the validators and verification and uh, uh, you know, uh, all the crypto economics going on uh, in terms of like, you know, making sure that you know, everybody is doing the right thing. And if somebody is not doing the right thing, penalizing them and all of that, you know, keeping the equilibrium and keeping the uh, system working. So, uh, right now, the focus really is on, hey, um, uh, you, know, the, you know, you did something wrong, okay, I'll penalize you. Uh, but what we are saying is, with, if you run, say, validator or you run a verifier inside a trusted compute and you have all of those uh, uh, log of your activity, you can really prove that, you know, hey, hey, I did do this. That means I did vote on it. Something else in the uh, ecosystem down the line is basically uh, censoring my output. Or, uh, or I did not do that because the, uh, the key that is used to sign the result is safely inside the thing and cannot be leaked. So uh, this is where we see is like uh, we can simplify some of these things, and this is where you will talk a little bit about it. And then lastly, at the, uh, at the execution layer, you know, signature validations, as an example, uh, you know, uh, it's, it's a common thing, and they take a lot of time. You can offload that. Uh, complex uh, uh, tasks that require a lot of uh, you know, gas, you can offload that to a you know, plasma chain built around this, or a side chain. So in general, like, like what the thing is, like what we see is like you know, uh, it uh, at the beacon layer, it uh, reduces the friction or reduces the fear that I might get slashed, uh, uh, and I don't have anything to fall back to. So it in a way uh, helps more people to participate and increase hopefully the democratization of this whole decentralization, and also helps with the scalability and uh, security. Uh, at this point, I will turn over to Andreas. Um, let's get a little real with, with uh, um, what we have here. Is this on? Oh, better. Um, so we talked about secure, private, and self-control, and it can be ubiquitous. So what are the type of services that could be built with this on top of Ethereum? So you have, um, for example, a decentralized uh, device registry which is uh, valuable when you're talking about IoT, um, self-driving vehicles. Um, you have secure multi-party uh, transaction signing, which is applicable um, not only for um, uh, Ethereum transaction, but for any transaction. You don't no longer need your private key on your device because you can have the signing done um, in a trusted way by multiple Parties, you have secure decentralized cloud. So we're talking with um, we're talking with um, OEMs to be able to provide um, uh, um, to collect a cloud, a fog um, of devices that run trusted compute services. And I'll talk um, at the end for a few minutes about that. Um, you also can do MPC analytics. Uh, you can also now do secure wallets and real-time oracles with this. And you can do secure public or private data stores. Um, uh, at Consensus, there, there are a, a project called Linea at the Decentralized Identity Foundation. We're working um, together with others on identity hubs where we will actually employ these, these uh, um, technologies. Then you have what you probably have heard before, off-chain compute, offload, a lot of smart contract uh, heavy logic um, onto trusted compute entities as well as uh, secure attestation validation. So for example, if your bank gives you your KYC and it says you have a, uh, uh, you have a US social security number, you have a valid US, US address, um, you don't want to reveal that, right? But you can prove that you're over, over 21, that, you're, uh, that you have a, a valid social security number and you can pass this attestation into a trusted compute that applies the logic to it and generates another anonymized uh, um, attestation that still proves the, the same thing. So after talking about the applications on top, let's come back one step and let's talk about um, 
what we can do on an Ethereum node. And apparently, I shouldn't shouldn't touch this. Um, so what Sanjay showed you about Ethereum 2.0, let's take that um, a l level deeper and let's uh, do, a, do a little journey of an Ethereum transaction. So it first comes into the transaction pool. Well, nowadays, any node can do anything with your transaction. It can, it can do front running. It can do, put it into any order that it wants, or it might just simply censor it. So if you ask, add a trusted ordering and encryption service to that, all of this goes away. So you're taking a significant attack vector um, out. If you're following along, you go to the EVM that goes into the level DB, you can now do a trusted EVM execution service before it goes to proof of work. That's for the main net. Um, if you're now going plasma, plasma chain, side chain, beacon chain, you're talking about Casper FFG. Um, and here, again, you can employ um, a trusted compute service that actually says, hey, I voted this way, right? And you know, no human being can, can, can influence that, which means the, your assurances that the vote was done honestly um, go up exponentially. So um, this is for, for a note. Let's, let's go one level deeper, okay? So I give you three concrete um, example already at, at layer one. Now let's dive one level deeper. This looks really, really ugly, and it is. Um, what I want to, to focus on, on the right-hand side, the actual trusted compute logic for a transaction ordering service is very, very simple. And um, on the left-hand side, and again, don't focus on, the, on all the text, the key thing are the two blue boxes about trusted transaction pool app and the uh, uh, trusted ordering registration update service are two updates that, are, that, can, that can be done to the, um, to the transaction pool uh, module in a complementary fashion, which means the actual change to, 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 the, to the protocol is actually minimal. So you can, with minimal protocol changes that have, do not require any hard forking or anything like, like that, you can increase the uh, security of uh, um, um, uh, of the Ethereum uh, um, network significantly. Okay, so after going down to the protocol layer, let's go one back up and talk about services. How can you discover these services? Right? There are, um, you know, you can you can run Intel SGX or or AMD or Trust Zone or you know, a zero knowledge proof service on your on your laptop, and that's great, but no one can find it. So, you know, that's you, the provider, you have your trusted compute. What do you need? You need a utility service market platform. So really for trusted compute is best if it has a marketplace um, with a broker service running on a on a blockchain such that a buyer who uses and needs this trusted compute service can now find it and pay for it on a per transaction or on a subscription basis. And now anybody in the world who runs uh, um, such a trusted compute service can register it, can expose it, and can offer it um, to, to anyone um, on this planet. And they can actually resell it if they want to. However, because of uh, um, the way this, this, this works, you can now exact um, another rent. Uh, it's fine. If you guys can hear me all right, then, then, that's, then, then that's good. So this way, the provider can, can also participate on the subsequent monetization of that uh, secure service so, um, uh, through, the, through, the, through the marketplace. So again, we're, we're, we're discussing with, with, with various um, OEM providers to actually, to actually build such a, such a marketplace. Um, so that's, that's very exciting work that's, that's going on that we're, we, we, want to push, uh, we want to push forward. And so when you look at the services, the applications, and the, and the, layer, and the layer one, you see how the trusted compute can really add to, as Sanjay said, to the democratization and decentralization 
of blockchains, not only Ethereum, but any blockchain that's out there. Um, so that's, that's why we're really um, <coughs> excited about um, this aspect. And therefore, it's a really, I um, want to finish here with a call to action um, to the community, right? We invite uh, you to review, improve, and to help implement this vision, not only uh, um, uh, for Ethereum, but for all blockchains, such that they can uh, be successful and deliver on their promise. Um, and as a first step, please join us tomorrow um, at the other trusted compute uh, and other trusted compute enthusiasts, um, actually um, in the ultraviolet room at 10 a.m., where we talk about the future of Ethereum with trusted compute. Thank you. Thank you very much, guys. We got eight minutes for questions, so let's get this started. On that previous slide, you had uh, the buyer reselling data that from the provider and the provider collecting rent from the buyer's third-party customers. Yeah. How, how in the world can you do that? Uh, you're, you're, you're actually not reselling the data, you're reselling the service, which means you, are, you're, you still control who, who gets the, the, the service. You still hold the permissioning, so if he wants to resell it, the other party needs to be added to that that to that to that service contract. So that's how you how you in, in ensure that you can that you get paid for that for that service if it's resold. So what do you say to ease the fears of people that, uh, that generally notice that trusted compute relies on trusted hardware that's oftentimes closed source and not allow for security reviews? Um, resulting in things like the level one terminal fault and then a recent breach that exposed system management mode on Intel chips that invalidated SGX completely. Just how do you, how do you reconcile that? So the, the general thing is like, you know, uh, being as much as open as we can in terms of like uh, uh, the, uh, the breaches happen not because they are intentional, breaches happen because, you know, we are starting to use this technology at scale and many people are looking at it. Uh, and as uh, uh, at Intel, right, we are committed to, uh, you know, working continuously and uh, quickly to, uh, you know, provide patches, provide uh, whatever is needed. And uh, uh, as, uh, you know, the, the breaches that happened, uh, there's lo a lot of information on the Intel website in terms of where you can get the patches and how you can basically, uh, you know, uh, put it on the systems and how we can, uh, you know, figure out whether the system has been passed. So there's a lot of information there. Also, you know, if you if you if you think about side channel um, attacks, um, actually, I, 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 I talked with with Marley Gray from 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 Microsoft yesterday, and we'll we'll probably do do um, a little experiment with with Microsoft Research to 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 see whether you can actually do a side channel attack on a laptop in a um, in a Starbucks, um, um, if that's if that's uh, if you can do that, then you really have a problem, right? Um, because typically you will not be able to to get the apparatus you need into a secure data center. That's really hard. So um, it's more like on your on your custom custom laptop, and we'll 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 um, we'll. We'll do that, and we'll hopefully, um, you know, uh, in some time, be able to produce a little, um, a little video about that and see how well that works or 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 doesn't doesn't work. So, um, looking looking forward, uh, uh, looking forward um, to that. So, and in the end, the more you get these trusted compute services out into the marketplace and into the hands of people, the more secure it's going to be, and the more. Um, Decentralized. So, if people are offering those those services and other people people use it, the risk of um, you know a few controlling the many is really um, is really low. Um, I just had a question: if you could try to correlate for the uh, you know naive observer who you know sees a vision here for something that allows additional scaling, better efficiency of compute, and so forth. But then it's not really on the roadmap when you know the Ethereum Foundation and the group is talking about what's in Ethereum 2.0. You know, zero knowledge proofs are. 
um, as both scaling and privacy. But so just, you know, can you say some words about that? Yeah, I, I can start that, right? So you're right. And, uh, and a lot of it is like uh, uh, generally a lot of, uh, you know, not information about how trusted computers work and all that stuff. So uh, we have uh, done a lot of work in the context of enterprise Ethereum. Wherein, uh, for example, we have uh, we have released a 0.5 version of an API via which uh, anybody on the chain, a smart contract on the chain, uh, can talk to a trusted compute and bring the results back and things like that. It's 0.5 version, and the idea is to get that kind of a conversation going, and that's where we are here in terms of like you know, hey, there are these things, and that trusted compute API that we have put out there, it's uh, not specific to a particular thing. You know, uh, we want to comprehend hardware-based and software-based trusted computes uh, because uh, it's not one; it's not a silver bullet uh, kind of a thing. Uh, so we see. A, a, so, so that's what uh, we are doing, and uh, uh, that would be a great place to start because they got a lot of their uh, stuff work in there. Is like right now more enterprisey in terms of uh, uh, the flows but immediately you know we, we, we're gonna start we we'll start work on uh, how to uh, make that apply uh, API apply for uh, enterprise uh, public ethereum where you have the gas constraints and things like that oh yeah so um, it's sort of a follow-up so, so to the, the, the just down me. in the back yeah yeah so sort of a follow-up to the question that was just asked um, you know, about how it's, uh, you know, we don't really see this on the roadmap, you know, with Ethereum 2.0. I think, like, one thing that would help is if, you know, these designs were, like, open, that would help, you know, people actually, like, trust what's going on. And then another thing is, is, I mean, have you all approached them even, you know, even the whole idea of, uh, you know, feeding, you know, randomness from, you know, Randau on the beacon chain into a VDF, you know, there's all this research and work going on to create a, you know, a verifiable delay function, ASIC, could this help yeah. with that? Could that so, replace yeah. that? Like, so, so why don't we talk about that so before we spend that, $20 million dollars on it? Or? You're right on the uh, mark, right? Because, like, you know, we have some really hard-earned, uh, you know, random generators within, uh, within the hardware um, uh, that uh, feed off the entropy within the system. Uh, and... Uh, when I look at Randau and think, uh, all that in context of Beacon Chain, it becomes very, very interesting. So that's where we talked about it. It's like, you know, uh, there's a role to be played, and uh, that's why we are here. It's like, you know, let's have that conversation going. What's the right way to are, do it? Are you, know, are you all approaching Justin Drake to ask him about uh, that? Uh, we have not yet, but the idea is first was to get the API out, uh, have something to shoot against, and yeah, but, uh, okay. but that's the idea. Yeah. I mean, that would just be a really good way to like get an answer really quick about what they, you know, what reservations they have, so that it could be moved forward. You know. Oh, so, thank you. Yeah. And it's it's this is the beginning of a dialogue, right? So, um, uh, and and one thing that I want to point out was just really important. What we're saying here is we're not replacing any of the current security features, right? We're not saying replace you know, a proof of work with a proof of um, elapsed time um, using Intel SGX or any other trusted, trusted enclave. What we're saying, we're adding additional security features to uh, the ecosystem stack that makes uh, the whole thing more secure, um, allows better decentralization, and lowers the barrier to, to entry because it is literally ubiquitous. Right already, right? You can you if if you run an i7 and i9, you can turn on turn on Intel SGX and 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 deploy uh, um, uh, a trusted a trusted service in, in a few minutes. So um, it it's about educating um, the ecosystem about this novel um, idea, and it really has only come out in the last you know six months really. Uh, um, six to nine months, really, that we've been working on um, on this to formulate the ideas, to talk with people like Virgil, to get feedback. So, and it's a it's a slow process, right? Because Intel came out first, and it was Intel held, held the keys, and that's what stuck in people people's heads. And you know, you're saying now Intel doesn't hold the keys anymore, or AMD or or ARM, 
it really doesn't doesn't matter. 